Today is the day that we are going to finally install those custom aluminum gates. With the little doggies, we're gonna finally install those today. We are here in Jackson, Wyoming, and this is exactly where they're gonna go. Our customer has an extra large driveway. He was looking for a gate that was gonna accommodate, but also showcase the main entrance to the home. Right now we are running into a little bit of an issue. We are running into the footer for the pillar. We just wanna to try to carve out a little bit of that footer so that the post can sit up nice and tight against the pillar, mainly right here against the cap. Just within the first hour, these are the obstacles that we're already dealing with. Like, what, what, who does that? We got gas going this way, we got power going that way through the tree, and we want to put an operator right here and the whole entire mess and just, ugh. If you guys run the utilities to these houses, could you please choose a better path than this? <laughs> I mean, it's like a game of tic-tac-toe here. We had to come up with a different plan. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna set back just a little bit. We're gonna have to make a custom panel to match the gates. Not a big deal. Have it installed from a post right here to the gate post, and we'll have the operator right here. A little bit of a bump in the road. We have a plan of action. We know how we're gonna solve this, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Actually, I would just recommend crying about it. Cry and call it quits for the day? Yeah. Right up in there. The edge of pad would be about right there. I'm hoping that today, yeah, what we can have done is we can have our holes dug, our posts set so we can hang our gates in the morning. I realized that this, digging this hole only took 10 seconds on the video, but I'm pretty sure that we were digging that hole for a little bit over an hour. The rocks were a lot easier to get through than the roots were. The roots were a very big challenge. A little harder than some people may think it is. So if you think that it may take only two minutes, I'm waiting for you to prove me wrong. <laughs> now with this one, we're gonna have to be very critical. We laid it out in a way that we could get away from the electrical line and away from the gas line and still have our hole. We're gonna start a little bit more towards the road and work out just a little bit so that that way we don't encounter those utilities. If we encounter the utilities, we're gonna to have to take extra precautions to make sure that they do not get encased in concrete because you are not allowed to encase a utility. Not a good idea, don't ever do it. Okay, you got this one? I'm just gonna read. All right, man, let's lay them away. There was an electric line, there was a gas line, then there was a tree, and now there's a fence post. And the crossing is right there. No, we haven't found any utilities, but we're, we're digging very cautiously. Okay, hold on. Okay, it's right, right there. All right, so I'm cheating. I'm using the laser level. The customer wants five inches clearance between the bottom of the gate and the top of the road to compensate for snow in the winter time. And they do have little dogs, so they don't wanna to go to a big gap. So what we're doing is I'm finding level. Instead of using a string and running a string, this is easier. We'll take this and match it up to every post. And then that way we'll ensure that both of these posts are 100% level in height with each other. Look, Kate, I got you a present. Take that home, give it to your dad. I already got caught in a rainstorm once today. Let me, let me, let me, let me. It wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have to walk, walk 10 miles. <sighs> Sarah's, that was only four backs. <sighs>
All right, so here we are back on day number two. We finally got the posts both in the ground last night. I think that we had them both set and lasered in somewhere around 8.45 last night. So yesterday was extremely long. So when we went to go set these posts last night and we were mixing the concrete, we mixed four bags and normally when you mix a ba four bags of concrete, it fills up the hole. We could barely even see it in the bottom of the hole. These holes are huge, they're massive. They're four feet deep and they're at least 20 inches in diameter. I don't wanna play anymore. Aspens. Three, two. Perfect. Frost line's about 26 to 28, and we're wanting to go about four inches past, and we're at 32. We're, got, we're good. Those tree roots really took it out of me. He was eating, he started this. On the slave side, we're gonna have just a power conduit. We're gonna do a wireless monitored photo eye. So one side's gonna be wired, the other side on the slave side is going to be wireless. So we're gonna do that. And then on the master side, we're gonna have a power conduit for the operator. We're gonna have three loop conduits, shadow loop, uh, obstruction loop, and a free exit loop. And we're also going to run a conduit for a keypad. This is our power. This is gonna be our free exit. This is gonna be our shadow and this is gonna be our communication. Our communication is gonna be the wire that goes from operator to operator. Without that, it's gonna be a single operator. And then that one would be a single operator. We want them to open together. So they have to communicate. We dug our holes, went through a million roots. The roots, man, holy moly. Working around the utilities, working around the tree. All of it was just kind of exhausting. Another one of the contractors on the job last fall dug through and severed the power to the water well. There was a water spigot right over there. We couldn't use that because they dug through the power. It felt like we were pushing concrete for a mile. I don't want to do it again today. I'm cheating. I'm calling in a concrete truck because I can't go on like that again. It's exhausting. We'd rather spend a little bit more money and get it done a lot faster. Since production has already taken place in the shop and everything's already fabricated, this is now our measuring point. So we know from here down, six inches is bottom of the gate. So this needs to be the top of our concrete form. We have set our laser to that elevation. We're gonna set this form and then we're gonna set the other form. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Hope we measured this thing right, because if they hit, I quit. So all we have to do is just a little bit of fine tune adjusting. Everything's gonna be awesome. Oh yeah, hey, by the way, we didn't say what kind of hinges we're using on this gate. We're making, we're using some of that badass series hinge. Make sure and see the links below. Okay, so we ordered a concrete truck. Yes, 100%, we did. I didn't want to mix all that concrete again. But the cool thing about this truck is it mixes on site. It's its own batch plant. It carries sand, it carries gravel, water, Portland. And it mixes on site, you pay for what you use. These things are super cool. He can control what kind of a mix you're gonna get. So you could do a five sack, six sack. So it's not just one standard mix. So if we want to make it just a little bit hotter, we can tell him that. We can ask for a six sack and he can do it. He can also control the slump too. 
Now that was easy. The hardest part of that was making the phone call. All right, so here we are on day number three. I know what you guys are thinking by now. This is ridiculous. No install should ever take this long. This is not a big box store kind of installation. This is a professional installation with custom made gates. All right, so we have the operator pads in. We have our loops laid out. We have an outside obstruction. We have an inside shadow. I said earlier on day number one that we were gonna use a free exit loop. I brought one other free exit device with me just in case. I wanted to change my mind, and based on the job layout and the site layout, I think I am gonna change my mind. I think we're gonna install a CP4. What is a CP4? A CP4 is a free exit device system. It's gonna sit here on the edge of the road. It's got 100 feet of cable in it, and then that whole thing is all weatherproof, waterproof. You bury it in the dirt about three inches below. Here we go. Here's to day three. We're using a BD saw cut loop. And on these loops, they give you a little red mark right there. That's the halfway point. So that's intended to go in that corner and the other return of your tail is supposed to go in that corner. So you're really trying to get that loop in your saw cut nice and even so that you have a nice clean install. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that blade, we're gonna come back in here just a little bit, widen that out, it's gonna be awesome. Before we even think about sealing this in, we're gonna take our megometer, we're gonna test both these loops, we're gonna make sure that they pass, even though they're brand new, just so that we know that these loops are good. Hey, Cade, what you doing? I just don't look at the corner. Don't look at the corners, okay. Okay. You know, it's honestly not bad. I mean, you're a little low here, so we're gonna have to go back and do a little top coat. We don't look at the corners. Don't, corners are hard, corners are hard. Okay, dokie. We got it. Yay! Common's white. What's positive? Black. Red. Is it red? What's negative? Black. Black. So what's green? Neutral. Green would be your normally open. Normally open, okay. It's common. Black could be a negative or common. Red's positive. Green is normally open. You just strip them the rest of the way and then hook them up the way that they're supposed to be. And then pretend like I know what I'm doing. All right, so next what we have going on is we need to go ahead and place this operator. In order to place it, it's a lot more complex than a chain drive or a slide gate operator. We have to measure off of this point right here. Uh, this is where the magic happens. So we have to be 46 inches from here to the gate, measure out where the arms are supposed to go by opening and closing the gates and positioning those arms and building the arms. That's what we're gonna do. That everything is just getting more chaotic. Tools are going everywhere. Feels like a complete bomb went off. Every tool in my truck feels like it's on the ground. We got all that stuff figured out. Took a little bit of head scratching to get it done, but it's done and we're ready to actually go ahead and place the master operator right now.
Yeah. You got this. One hookup on this one. All the other hookups are gonna happen on the other operator. We got the loops wired in. We have the comm wire wired in. We have the keypad wired in. We have the puck wired in. And we have the photo eyes wired in. The puck is down here. We have not buried the puck yet because what we want to do is we want to go ahead and test it before we bury it. And then also we're going to make mention where said puck is. So that way if we come back and maintenance and service on this operator, we're going to know exactly where that puck is. Now it's time to go ahead and finally start programming the operators. All right, so right here we have the CP4, also known as the puck. He's gonna go ahead and bring that sweet car right on up here. We're gonna go ahead and test it and make sure that that gate opens. And it works great. So there's one more thing that we're gonna go ahead and test here. We're gonna test that outside obstruction loop. Go ahead and go through, Cade. Okay, stop. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna test this outside obstruction loop. We're gonna let the gates start closing and then we're gonna back up on top of this loop and then that should tell these gates to open up. There, he never even came close to breaking the photo eye beam. The vehicle detection system caught the vehicle. We couldn't be more happy with the install. We couldn't be more happy with the production of the gates. The awesome thing about the gates is they're made in-house, 100% custom. There's nothing about this that we had to source from somebody else other than the raw materials themselves. 100% built by us, custom made by us. One of the neat features about these gates, our customer has two dogs. We took pictures of their actual dogs. Here's a cutout of one of their dogs. And here's another cut out of the other dog. So these gates resemble their dogs. That's just how custom these gates are and with the things that you can do when you do a custom gate. If you guys are looking for a complete customized gate package, and we're talking a complete package. We're talking all your safety requirements, your keypad, your operators, your custom gate. Make sure and email us at sales at swifence.com. We can ship it anywhere. And if you're within our area, we can install your gate for you. If you guys want to see the build of this gate, make sure and see that video right here. And if you guys want to see us install a vertical pivot gate, make sure and see that video right here. This is Dan with SWI and Cade. We are Wyoming's Fence Company and we hope you have a good dang day. Hey, hey, we're filming here. <laughs>